G'day Ziggy D here and today I want to give you guys some tips in Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls for gearing up your fresh level 70s to get into Torment 1 farming. So I've been getting a lot of questions on the stream from people asking what's the most efficient way to sort of gear up, uh, you know, to get yourself into Torment. What's that initial sort of gearing period and how do you get past that? Well we've done a bunch of different testing by this point. We've, I've sort of farmed a bunch of different ways from like doing the campaign to farming some like little zones to doing uh, split bounties on low difficulties bounties on higher difficulties and even high difficulty uh, rifts and trying to chain those both solo and with groups. And uh, from all of that testing I've sort of discovered that uh, doing bounties on normal is definitely the best way to gear a new character. You're getting a lot a lot of crafting materials, you're getting a lot of rares, you're able to sort of craft those rares up and to get that initial base of rares going, that's definitely the most important first stepping stone. And also from doing those bounties and getting those bounties done really quickly, you're getting lots and lots of chances to get the bounty legendaries. And the bounty legendaries are really big stepping stones into Torment 1 farming. So I did do some Torment 1 farming pretty efficiently. Well, you know, I was getting up to the 600k DPS, 5 million toughness sort of range with a combination of a few legendaries and rares. And, uh, you know, it was farming Torment 1, and it was okay, it was okay, it was reasonably efficient, but not great. But once I started to accrue a few of those, a few of those bounty legendaries, that's when things started to really turn around. And uh, I sort of taken a bit of a look at the bounty legendary list and uh, sort of figured out this is probably the best way for most people to do this. So for example, two of the bounty legendaries that have really propelled me forwards into a super, super efficient uh, bit like in, uh, Torment 1 rift farming essentially, which is where you want to get. You want to be able to farm the highest level possible uh, rifts and get a lot of legendaries and do a lot of gambling that way. But the two ones that really propelled me forwards were the Gloves of Worship, which although they're currently bugged are still excellent uh, gloves even after they get fixed to be 10 minutes for all of the shrines, still having those shrines for 10 minutes is a pretty big deal. And the Pride's Fall, which it helps me a lot on my Demon Hunter by reducing my resource costs. For the most part, like most of the time, my resource costs are reduced. And uh, the other thing is like the legendary weapon. Now, I got a Donetta's Revenge. However, it's very easy to get your first legendary weapon through those bounties. So let's just kind of go through the list and talk about those bounty-specific legendaries. And uh, then I'll talk about the best ways to actually go about farming that. So if I switch on over here, this is a full list. I'll, I'll link to you, this to you guys in the description below. This is a full list of the different bounties that are available in each of the bounty bags, uh, courtesy of Diablo Mandan. So we have uh, Act. Sorry, we'll, we'll start off with Act Four. Act Four has the bounties from every single uh, zone in it. Now, I actually don't think it's worth farming Act Four if you're solo. I wouldn't bother doing Act Four because if you're going for a specific uh, legendary from these bounty lists here then uh, Act 4 will have the lowest chance out of any act of dropping that legendary. So it's really not worth doing. If you're farming by yourself, you should just farm the one act that is most important for you. So, as a Demon Hunter, I recommend, well as any class, I recommend going for your weapon first. Because the big, the difference between a rare weapon and a legendary weapon, we can switch on over to the game here, is pretty significant. Like, okay, so here's an example of really GG rare weapon, you know, for at this point in the game, this is like the best rare weapon I've ever seen, the best rare one-handed crossbow I've ever seen. 2274 DPS, dex vitality, and the crit damage for the socket. So, comparing that to the legendary Donettas, and this is just an averagely rolled Donettas, it can get a lot better than this. That's incredible, the amount of difference there. We're looking at, you know, uh, almost a bit over 200, 220 extra DPS, base DPS, which is really important, and then uh, much, much more of the actual main stats. You can see the main stats on the Donettas go up to 750, whereas the rares only go up to 625. Huge, huge difference between legendaries and rares, and this is the same across all legendaries. So the biggest thing to really propel you forwards, especially in softcore, but pretty much in any case, is going to be to uh, increase that DPS a lot, and it's going to allow you to kill things much faster and much more efficiently. And also it's going to help you farming a little bit more in that normal while you collect up the rest of the things you need to get going in Torment really well. So looking at this, you want to pick the act that is the best for you. As a Demon Hunter, for example, I want to go for Hell Trapper. That's the one-handed legendary crossbow. It's actually quite a good crossbow too. So I'll probably farm up one of these pretty soon for my offhand. And uh, that'll be a nice jump forwards for me as well. But if this, if you're using two, two rares at the moment, or if you're using a two-handed rare bow, then you probably want to go for Hell Trapper. This is a very nice starting point. And one-handed crossbows seem to be in pretty good state at the moment in Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. So you want to be like, Act 5? Alright, I'm going to farm Act 5. And you just run Act 5 yourself on the lowest difficulty, normal, as fast as possible doing those bounties. 
Now you also might want to keep an eye out for a few other things like say the Cloak of Deception might be a nice legendary cloak to go for and you know you might also want to say you're a, ba you're a barbarian or you're just any character going for a melee weapon you probably want to go Act 1 for Mad Monarch Scepter. These are the main things to go for like look at the weapon first and then start to look at a few of the other things that you can go for maybe some of the jewelry and stuff like that. But uh, what I recommend doing is just like focusing on the weapon first getting whatever weapon you need so either Mad Monarch Scepter, Hell Trapper or if you like uh, want to go for one of the specific ones like I believe there's a Witch Doctor Dagger in here. If you want to go for one of these first then uh, I would go for those. I don't even know that's actually there's actually not a specific Witch Doctor Dagger, it's just a dagger in general. Okay so you want to go for like those specific weapons that are going to help you most. So beyond that point uh, I think the best thing you can possibly do is get a four-man group together and do what's called split bounty farming. This is something you guys might have, may or may not have heard about by now, but it's a very popular method of farming bounties very quickly and very efficiently. Essentially, it allows you to do four times the amount of bounties in the time it would normally take you to do one. So while you're farming the act you think is really important, you know, if you're doing that solo, that's fine. You just keep farming that act over and over again. But when you get a four-man group together doing this split bounty farming method, you're getting four times the amount of legendaries, you know, four times as quickly and uh, as well as a bunch of better extra XP and gold as well so it's really good stuff so the way split bounty farming works is you get a party of four together you play on normal difficulty so you can clear very efficiently and very quickly even when separate and what you all do is you just go to a different act you just pick whichever act you prefer I usually go to act one because it's my favorite act I jump in and start doing act one bounties the other guy might go to act three someone else might go to act two and then you know you just everyone splits up you just have four people one in each different act now everyone just does their bounties as quickly as they can can do possibly solo and everyone gets the reward whenever a bounty is completed everyone gets the XP and gold and whenever all of the bounties are completed in that zone and you go talk to Tyrael and you get your bounty bag everyone gets the bounty bags so the uh, you know the Hydric caches so at the same time you know everyone's getting those bounties much much more quickly it's a really brilliant sort of farming method and it's very effective for getting a lot of rares getting a lot of legendaries those especially those cache legendaries those cache legendaries as quickly as possible uh, and then, you know, once you've done all four of your separate acts, or, you know, whenever you're done, you just go help someone else add an act in a separate zone to them, and then you just all eventually team up and take down whatever act is left over as well, doing separate zones, just like making sure you're always in separate spots, and then just teaming up for the last few if you need to. And uh, it's super fast, super efficient, and I got a ton of legendaries this way and a ton of other rares and things like that, and uh, really propelled me forward. So that's the number way, one way I want to sort of recommend to you guys to gear up early on. You'll get those initial legendaries you need, you'll get that legendary weapon, and nice and quick and you'll get a few of those other legendaries which will help you out like for example gloves of worship and prides fall and a few of the other rings and amulets and stuff that are available in there so the next thing I want to talk about just as general mindset as you're starting to gear up I think this is something people need to start to uh, think about in Reaper of Souls as they're trying to move towards Torment 1 is it's actually really important to think about utility and the additional not tooltip DPS. So tooltip DPS has been the focus in Diablo 3 vanilla, you know, for a very long time. We're like, we're trying to inflate that tooltip DPS, trying to break that 1 million DPS mark in River of Souls. And I still see people really focused on that. And indeed at the start, I was pretty focused on that as well. I was trying to pump up my Demon Hunter's DPS as much as possible. However, I started to realize that I was even willing to drop some DPS as long as it meant that I was able to increase my utility and you increase my actual percentage non my, my effective DPS scaling essentially so I'm talking about things like uh, increased cluster arrow damage here on my cluster arrow spec 13% increased cluster arrow damage is far far more effective than like 50k tooltip DPS it makes a huge difference to your actual clear speed and then I'm also talking about things like percentage fire damage 20% increased damage to fire skills is massive. I use, you know, two different fire skills here. I use, you know, a chakrams and I use the cluster arrows, all fire skills. They are all get benefiting from that very, very, very well. And then I'm also talking about the other utility stuff. So I'm talking about Reaper's Wraps. You know, I crafted these as a high priority item. This is one of the first things I tried to craft and I recently released a guide on it. Although the crafting material for this is currently bugged, hopefully that's fixed soon. It's like, this is a, one, an example of utility you want to look out for. You know, even if I had to drop DPS from another potentially better braces, and there are better braces out there, higher DPS braces, Reaper's Wraps gives you Health Globes Restore Primary Resource. What that means is I have Primary Resource very, very often. I'm, you know, full on Primary Resource all of the time, and I'm able to just simply put out a heap of those Cluster Arrows. And Cluster Arrows, you know, my high damage skill, getting more of those out is far more important than like 100, I'd sacrifice 100k 
tooltip DPS for that in a heartbeat. The ability to spam cluster arrow freely instead of, you know, sort of having to wait and use a hatred generator. For example, I've gotten my build to the point now where I don't need to use a hatred generator. That's an example of utility really taking over. I'd easily sacrifice 50k DPS to, you know, not have to ever use a hatred generator again. I can use chakrams instead. Higher damage, better AoE than any hatred generator in the game. And uh, I can use that now because I've been able to really focus on that utility. You know, I've gone for the Reaper's Wraps, I've gone for the Pride's Fall, I've got the Gloves of Worship going, and I've got my, my you know, extra hatred regen, resource cost reduction, and things like that going as much as possible. So really, don't focus too much on your tooltip DPS, although it's important to have a nice base DPS. And you know, you do want to try and get your crit chance and crit damage and stuff like that high. You really want to also consider that utility and those percentage modifiers that increase your effective DPS. Anyway, hopefully that helps you guys. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.